Hi everybody, this is Evan Luzai from The Black and Blue, and today I'm sitting in a hotel room at a Washington DC hotel doing a little bit of data loading. Now this isn't something that I normally do, but every once in a while a job comes up that, you know, the price is right, the hours are right, so I go ahead and take it. But I thought it would be useful for you to know sort of the basic uh, data wrangling kit that I have as opposed to somebody who might build a cart worth thousands of dollars. This is sort of the bare bones thing and it's not the fastest uh, kit in the world, but it, it, you might be able to build it by spending a couple hundred extra dollars and uh, it, could, it could give you a few jobs every now and then. So let me just sort of go over what I have uh, going on here. I actually have a dump going on right now of a 32 gig card. It's been going on for about 40 minutes already. It's got 17 minutes left. We have it dumping to two different hard drives with two terabytes on it each. Um, I'm not sure how much footage they've gone through the day yet. I've got I had three 32 gig cards from A camera and about four from B camera. And then I had the sound guys uh, data two to load. Um, so we're dumping it two backups. Uh, that's pretty standard. If the more backups you have, the better if you can afford three, but two is essential. And uh, one thing an AC taught me that I've always remembered is always make sure you have two copies of everything before you willingly erase anything. So don't format a card until you have two copies. Don't put anything on a new hard drive until you have two copies. Basically, you want to have a redundant copy before you move, transfer, modify, whatever you're going to do with it. Always just have a backup. So anyway, the main part of my kit, besides these hard drives, which production provides, I would never buy my own hard drives, especially because they usually go to editorial or through the post pipeline when you're done. But I have an old MacBook Pro. Uh, this isn't one that I bought for, for data loading. It's just my personal computer. It's one that I bought in college, so it's kind of old. Uh, so I've kind of had to beef it up a little bit with peripherals to make it acceptable, especially with data rates getting so heavy these days. So just recently, I bought a Lexar ExpressGuard CF reader for compact flashcards. And this goes in a little Express slot on the side of your MacBook Pro. Newer models, only the 17 inch has that express card slot, uh, but the newer models also have Thunderbolt, which is insanely fast, so peripherals will start coming out for that, so you can uh, take advantage of that if you aren't uh, blessed with the express card slot, which is actually, this is the first time I'm using it. Um, also in here I have a similar uh, express card adapter for SD cards for some Nikon cameras. Most sound guys use SD cards some of the lower DSLRs, like the one I'm shooting on right now, the T3i uses SD cards. So I have that. I've got the cards I'm dumping. Uh, I've got two rolls of camera tape. Now, this is kind of a different data loading job for me because I'm doing it after they've shot everything at the end of the day, but normally I'd be doing it throughout the day. And so what I like to have is green tape. That way when I've double checked a card when it's okay to format, I can wrap it in green tape to the point where an AC would have to unwrap it to get to it. Uh, they can pop it in the camera and they can format it knowing that the green tape means it, it has been checked. Um, I usually go up to the AC or the camera operator or the DP and tell them, if you get it without, without the green tape, don't format it. That, you know, bring it back to me. It could have been my fault, but I just want to double check it. Uh, the worst thing that could happen when you're in this job is having something get accidentally erased because it all comes down to you. There's nobody else checking footage on set. So that's sort of uh, the basic tools I'm using. It's pretty simple. Uh, most hard drives will come with cables. Oh, the thing I do have that you can't see is a battery backup system in case the power goes out. And uh, as I'm shooting, it's kind of stormy outside, so I'm really glad I have it. It will buy me about 40 minutes worth of time which, you know, I couldn't finish the job on that, but I could at least make sure that nothing gets damaged, the hard drives don't get damaged if the power goes out. So the next thing I want to talk about is sort of just the layout of the folders that I make on the hard drives to organize the footage. If you're doing a multi-day shoot, the, at the most basic level, I just do day one, day two, day three, day four, etc. Within that, I'll make multiple folders. Um, I'll do an A camera folder, a B camera folder, so on and so forth, and then I have a sound folder. And uh, within those folders, say for the A camera folder, I'll dump 
the first, whatever the first card I get, that's roll A001. So I make a folder in that called A001. And then I just transfer everything from the card into that folder. Even the, the thumbnail previews, just I don't even mess with the structure of the card itself. I want to save absolutely everything. And this is integral, especially on red footage, where uh, messing with just the tiniest little detail could just corrupt every little R3D. So you don't ever want to just pick and choose which clips you're downloading. Just, just dump it all into one folder. So as the day goes on, when I get another uh, card from A camera, it'll be A002, and that goes on. And that carries over over the days. So if at the end of day one, I'm on A008. At the beginning of day two, I'll be on A009. And so you do that for every camera. And so there are some days where you only shoot four rolls on B camera, but ten rolls on A camera. And you just kind of have to check. And then within the sound folder, uh, most sound guys will just have you dump all their stuff at the end of the day. Or maybe do a dump at lunch and then a dump at the end of the day as well. And within those folders, you can, if you want to, you can just do one or two. Or you can do like a SND001, just something to denote that it's, it's sound. And every now and then I get on a job where they want me to keep uh, little log notes. Um, and those I just do a text, text edit document on my Mac. And uh, I'll just save that to whatever day it, it relates to. Or if I want to leave a note for the editor or whoever's in the post pipeline, say if a clip is corrupted or if I'm using the labels on my Mac, then I'll leave a little key for them. You know, I'll just type in, please read me as the title. And then I'll type in whatever notes I have for them. And that way I don't, you know, I tried the route where I would go up to a producer and be like, oh, hey, make sure you tell him, blah, blah, blah. And they would just get lost in the shuffle. They would either not remember or they'd mess up the message and the editor would end up calling me anyway. So it's a lot easier if you just write everything down into a little text document and save it where they need to see it. And uh, I think most editors and post people are pretty good. If they see a file, they know it's been in there intentionally and they're going to look at it even if they aren't even sure what it is. So that's kind of how I do the folder structure. And the key, I mean, the key for this is you want it to be super organized. So when it gets into post-production, people aren't just bugging out at how confused they are over which footage is which and all that good stuff. So once, uh, once I've dumped it, which I still got 10 minutes on this thing, once I've dumped it, I'll go through and check each folder. And how I do that is on a Mac, I would hit the Apple and the I and get the info. And I can get the exact number of gigabytes that a card uh, has on it, you know, how much space is taken up. And then I check those folders on each drive and make sure that that number is uh, consistent. And then what I'll do is I'll go through and I like to check the first clip on a card, a clip in the middle, and then a clip at the end. And if there's a bunch of clips, like on this one we have over, over 200, um, I'm probably going to do about five to eight spot checks. And what I do for that is I just open it up in quick time, I watch the first few seconds, I scrub through the whole thing quickly, watch the end, then it's good. And sometimes if you're on set, you may be pressured to be turning cards over very fast, in which case um, you do have to do the spot checks fast, but please never sacrifice uh, doing your job right for the time. You know, uh, if, if you're getting really pressured, just go up to them and just be like, look, I need to double check that these cards are safe. I don't want any footage loss. And people may be frustrated, they may be annoyed, but they're also going to understand. All right, and so the last thing I want to go over, I think I already did, where I talked about how I do the green tape, and and then uh, ACs and DPs know that it's good to format a card. Just one thing I want to add to that, if you can add a verbal cue where you say this is okay to format, then then I think that that is more than enough, and people really seem to appreciate when I go up to them and say this is okay to format. Because I think whenever somebody formats a card, they, they have that moment of hesitation where it's, oh, I hope he checked it. But if I tell them up front that I did check it, then that worrisome uh, little moment is gone. And so you make sure you do say it's OK to format, though. I mean, don't be ambiguous. Don't just say, this is good. This is OK. Um, you know, that could be taken in any way. So just say it's OK to format. Make sure it has green tape on it or whatever system you want to do. And, uh, and now we'll be good to go. And 
So that's sort of how I do a little bit of media management. You know, it's not super complicated. It's more like copy and paste. It's to the point where I had the time while this is going on to make this video. So if you can get a job here and there doing this, I recommend it. It's, it's simple work, but it usually pays pretty decently and it's not so bad. I mean, it could be worse. I could be out hauling gear in the storm or, or who knows, working through the night. So right now I'm in a cushy hotel room that's 69 degrees just sitting at a computer. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm sorry if the sound was a little bad. I'm uh, right off uh, DuPont Circle in D.C., which is a really busy intersection, and um, I didn't have a microphone or anything. And also, I'm sorry this video turned out a little bit longer than I hoped, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. All right. See you later.